uh, much more time as uh, sir needs no introduction over to you sir thank you very much and it's a pleasure to be here and my task is to just discuss uh, three cases with you three case scenarios and look at how oral semaglutide may have benefits beyond glucose control so uh, this is my uh, presentation and these are my disclosures and we have three patients one is a recently diagnosed type 2 diabetes patient with weight issues uh, type 2 diabetes with cardiovascular disease and of course a lady with type 2 diabetes <coughs> with CKD on insulin so let's look at uh, the first patient uh, HP1C is 8.5 patient is on metformin 500 mg twice daily the BMI is 30 the blood pressure is high and there is a family history of type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease and sedentary lifestyle so this is a patient with obesity and uh, with type 2 diabetes which is uncontrolled and failing metformin and let's assume that the patient can afford to pay for expensive therapies like GLP ones of course in future GLP ones are going to become more economical <coughs> once they go off patent and we expect that to help our patients but right now let's assume all these patients are well off so if you look at this patient if she receives oral semaglutide uh, she could achieve the glucose control target because 8 out of 10 do achieve it uh, she will achieve the composite of glucose control and weight loss uh, it's likely that this glucose control is going to be sustained for a long period of time and just like you have dietary remission of type 2 diabetes we have pharmacological remission of type 2 diabetes and that means that she could be without the need for additional therapy or without the need for insulin and uh, for a longer period of time so early initiation of type semaglutide in type 2 diabetes can achieve clinically relevant targets if you're looking at a1c or a1c plus weight loss and in across the studies if you look at all the studies with all the comparators you will see that a higher proportion of patients on semaglutide achieve weight loss of more than five percent now why is this five percent generally we say that if you lose just five percent you can actually help control your diabetes but more than five percent you start getting other benefits and more than ten percent you get benefits like sleep apnea reduction osteoarthritis benefits uh, quality of life improvement becomes significant cardiovascular protection becomes fatty liver uh, sorry MSLD becomes uh, 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 better so all those benefits you start getting beyond a certain point so one in two patients actually achieve more than five percent weight loss and then you will see that oral semaglutide naturally it reduces food intake and like Dr. Gangopadhyay said uh, it's a natural control on the patient the patient who tells you that if I eat a little bit more then I get a gastric issue or I feel nausea so don't eat because that's a natural control mechanism for patients now this shows now it's very important and there is something called a rule of four if any patient loses four kilos one kilo is going to be lean body mass and three kilos is going to be fat semaglutide also if you look at GLP ones also people lose lean body mass as well as fat mass but with semaglutide the fat mass is relatively selectively reduced and the lean mass is somewhat preserved and this data is very important because our goal is not weight reduction our goal is fat reduction and fat selective weight loss is something that is coming up and there are newer agents being tried out where GLP ones are being attached to molecules that can potentially preserve the lean body mass as well so as I mentioned GLP ones will are effective in achieving and maintaining the weight loss and the only thing is if you initiate early you prevent complications and the legacy effects are there so as I mentioned in addition to dietary remission pharmacological remission is also important and if you give a ben benefit of SGLT2 with semaglutide you get even better benefits the BMI reduces the fasting plasma glucose reduces the A1C reduces and therefore there is almost a double improvement in uh, A1C so 
the question uh, as was mentioned it's not about uh, empagliflozin versus semaglutide it is about empagliflozin plus semaglutide so that our patients get benefit of different modalities of tackling diabetes and this was a pioneer real study and uh, I'm also part of this pioneer real study and of course Dr. Gangopadhyay has already mentioned the study and uh, it is approved for first line management also uh, the DCGI approved it for first line management in January 2024 and that is a testimony to the increasing benefits which are being seen and the large number of clinical trials which are there with oral semaglutide. So friends, if oral semaglutide is initiated early, you get to target, you get to target glucose with weight loss, you get a sustained glucose control and you get what is called the magic of pharmacological type 2 diabetes remission, especially if you are able to add it to an SGLT2 inhibitor and the news is that it is now can also be used as monotherapy. Now type 2 diabetes with cardiovascular disease is very important because people with type 2 diabetes eventually succumb mostly to cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes is a leading risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So this gentleman has a BMI of 28, a blood pressure is high, he had an MI already, the HbA1 is 8.7, he has dyslipidemia, chronic kidney disease, he is on metformin 1000 milligrams twice daily and ARBs. We don't want to reach this situation. That's why I showed you the first patient. We don't want to reach the situation. But if you have reached the situation with your patient, then there's still a possibility to salvage it. I think there's some other you know, conversation coming through the next door. It's fine. I'll speak a little loudly. I hope I don't disturb them. But well, 5 kilos of weight loss, up to 5 kilos of weight loss is going to benefit this patient. And it's important to set expectation. If you tell your patient weight loss, patient will be expecting for, the, for an expensive medicine a lot of weight loss. So don't tell the patient 10 kilos weight loss, 15 kilos. We all have a few patients who have lost 10 kilos. That's possible. But always keep the expectation realistic. In practice, it is better to under promise and over deliver to the patients. So therefore, tell the patient 3 to 4 kilos or 4 to 6 kilos. 5 kilos is what you can expect. That is enough for this gentleman because it can lead to an A1C reduction of 1.5, a waste reduction of 4.7, a BP reduction of 5 systolic, and reduction in cardiovascular risk factor inflammation, and potentially maize reduction. Again, there's evidence for each of these things. You can see the A1C reduction. Uh, more people achieve target with uh, oral semaglutide, and also it reduces systolic blood pressure and each 10 milligram itself has so many benefits. So reduction of some BP is always good. It can improve the lipid profile. It can reduce inflammation and of course it consistently GLP-1. If you look at GLP-1 as a whole, GLP-1 consistently reduces the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events especially if you combine the sustained and pioneer results. So there is therefore if you look at a reduction in cardiovascular and all-cause mortality and SOL study is an ongoing cardiovascular trial and uh, we are also uh, uh, participating in the study and the study is almost ending or in the process of ending and almost 9642 patients with type 2 diabetes are in the study age is more than 50 years all these patients have established cardiovascular disease and chronic kidney disease and or chronic kidney disease and the A1C 6.5 to 10 percent and uh, they were randomized to 14 mg semaglutide or placebo with standard of care and the primary event is to see that whether oral semaglutide can lower the risk of three point maze that is non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke and cardiovascular uh, uh, outcomes. So this study I think the results will tell us whether actually oral semaglutide is superior in reducing. There are some unique differences in baseline characteristics compared to other studies. There are almost 800 patients from India and there is a good proportion of heart failure patients at uh, baseline. There is a sizable, these people are 
many of them are receiving SGLT2 inhibitors. So that concept of SGLT2 inhibitors with semaglutide or on top of semaglutide, semaglutide on top of SGLT2 inhibitors will be tested in this study. So now, while we talk about diet and exercise and metformin, we are also worried about cardiovascular and kidney disease and organ protection. So the use of drugs which give organ protection have to be considered early irrespective of whether patient is on diet, exercise or metformin. So they will reduce that. So therefore, people at very high risk of cardiovascular disease with ACVD markers, uh, chronic kidney disease, if you wish for weight loss, then you know you can consider semaglutide or you can consider tirzepatide. Now, you are looking at benefits for this gentleman. This, this gentleman who already has had an MI, he's going to lose weight, he's going to reduce A1C by 1.5, he's going to reduce waist by up to 5 centimeters almost, BP is going to come down better, cardiovascular risk factor is going to get better, and potentially he might get a maze reduction. So that is why you're, so the point is when you talk to the patients about semaglutide, uh, it's not just about weight loss. You have to tell the patient, this drug may potentially have weight loss, will improve your sugar, but it has these sort of cardiovascular protection. And now let's look at the renal protection data. This is a lady with type 2 diabetes and CKD on insulin, and she's having an A1C of 8.9. The body mass index is 28. Uh, EGFR is 60. She is already on insulin. She has hypertension, dyslipidemia, in addition to CKD. She is on DPP4 inhibitors, SGLT2 inhibitors, ARBs, and diuretics. She also had a stroke. So really, she is a, already a cardiovascular disease patient, already a CKD patient. Compared to the previous patient, this is she is in a more advanced state. In her, you can get potential nephroprotective effects of oral semaglutide. Uh, glycemic and weight reduction benefits in CKD and additional A1C of 1.2% even if she is on insulin. So that's the point. If this patient is on insulin, you can get an additional A1C of 1.2. And what is the other benefit? Insulin causes weight gain. Insulin causes hypoglycemia. Uh, a GLP-1 will not cause weight gain. It will cause even weight loss. And also, it actually is not associated with hypoglycemia. So you might need, it may have an insulin sparing effect as well. So no weight gain, even weight loss you may get up to 4.2 kilos of patients on insulin and you can see an insulin sparing effect. There is evidence for each of these things including low risk of hypoglycemia and maize. So there is a lot of data on actually is GLP-1s and nephroprotection. And this is true for oral semaglutide and injection semaglutide. And there's a study on injection semaglutide published in the New England Journal of Medicine. But here we are talking about oral semaglutide. That study was called the FLOW study that is already published showing renal benefits. This is, we are talking about oral semaglutide. But you can see there is an increased natriuresis. And you know that the sodium is playing a very, very important role in patients with hypertension, uh, with regard to heart failure and so many things. And that helps, and also reducing the kidney as well as systemic inflammation by reducing uh, TNF alpha and reducing oxidative stress. So it may have all these benefits. The renal hemodynamics may also improve because you are seeing a slower decline in EGFR, and you are also seeing an anti-albuminuric effect. And you can see that if you use oral semaglutide, you can contribute to preventing CKD and renal complications. Decline in kidney function is slower and it can improve GFR and reduce UACF. Remember some patients have non-albuminuric diabetic kidney disease where only the EGFR falls. That can also be benefited. I'm not saying this is the only drug that can protect the kidney. You have empagliflozin, dapagliflozin. Again, this is not a battle between SGLT2 and uh, GLP-1. It's a, a battle against diabetic kidney disease by combining all the agents we can to use our help our patients including phenyrenone and other nephroprotective agents. So GLP-1s have a cardiovascular benefit which is irrespective of the EGFR and also 
guidelines are now recommending GLP-1 in type 2 diabetes with CKD for additional glucose control and albuminuria. Greater proportion of patients on insulin achieve glucose control uh, uh, with uh, uh, oral hypoglycemic agent when semaglutide is added and this is the RCT pioneer rate and you can see the patients were on stable treatment with insulin in that. So you can use it on top of insulin. Well I have discussed three cases. The first case was a patient with newly diagnosed, second was CVD and third was CVD plus CKD. I think we should look at beyond glucose control what this medicine may be able to do. There are other medicines, there are more GLP ones, there is SGLD2 inhibitor. I think all this together is going to help our patients.